Welcome to Dr. Roger and Friends, the bright side of longevity, hosted by three peas in a podcast, Doc Roger, Teresa, and Danielle. Thanks for joining us for Coffee and Conversation. Kathy McMillan has nearly 30 years of experience in personal financial management and is a certified financial planner, registered financial planner, certified financial divorce specialist, and chartered investment manager. Kathy is one of the first individuals in Canada to have trained with the Sudden Money Institute in Florida, specifically to develop unique skills in order to assist individuals undergoing personal and financial transition, and is a certified financial transitionist. Today's topic is the Wealth Health Connection. Kathy and I have a lot in common uh, besides uh, being drawn to each other, you know, at uh, just because of similar interests. She's Canadian and my grandparents are Canadian. She loves mountains and I love mountains. She loves horses and I love horses. And she's just a great conversationalist and she knows things that I don't and I want to learn from her and we've learned from each other. So, Kathy, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, Dr. Landry, it's so lovely to see you again. I certainly wish it was in person. Yes. And uh, we're going to try to arrange that uh, post COVID, right? And that would be wonderful. <laughs> we are, if I may, have this little teaser leader. Uh, we're welcoming Dr. Landry to Calgary in June of next year, where we have a wonderful venue booked in our brand new library. The architecture is stunning. And there's a lovely tiered theater. And I'm going to fill the house. And Dr. Landry's kindly offered to um, speak. It's the combination of um, a, a number of things that all come together for good health. And I feel that your message is really important and part of um, complementary to what I do. Absolutely. Your message also is very, very powerful. And that's why Danielle and I thought that, uh, that this would just be a tremendous opportunity to uh, to, you know, explore some of those other things that have to do with health and lifestyle and um, you bring it. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, you know, <laughs> obviously your clients trust you. I mean, in fact, uh, you have told me and, and other people I know who are in the same business have told me how people can break down, get very emotional and get into topics that are way beyond uh, what you would normally think or the outsider would think. And uh, they appreciate your experience, and, and uh, you know it's uh, it, it, it you know it can be a, a, a quite a different experience. I think uh, it must have been for you uh, at some time. So, could you share some of the surprises that you've had with this, namely the sort of things that were brought up where where they were either either just wanted to tell you or were looking for advice way beyond the financial. Well, I definitely in my 30 years, I, I always say I never have a dull day because the stories and the situations and, and people, there's, there's just such a variety. And I find that I really need to know the person if I'm going to manage their money. If, if I'm working in a silo, I just don't understand it. But I've had some wowzers and I'll really have to narrow down to two situations, which uh, the latter one took me, it, it made me breathless. It was so unusual. And I thought I kind of heard it all. Uh, there is a current one I'm working on. It's a lady that's just coming to me. And um, she's around 66 or so. And she's been married for 46 years with a fairly high profile gentleman, high net worth. During COVID, he was off his stride. He had started uh, retirement at that age, which, you know, I plan on working forever. It gives me purpose, but he had made a decision to retire formally and then contract. And then COVID hit. They couldn't travel. They had a beautiful home in Hawaii, beautiful home, Vancouver Island, beautiful home in Calgary. You would say from the outside looking in that this couple had it all two very successful sons, but he came, became more and more withdrawn during COVID, not their usual activities, and that transition into retirement, which can be daunting. 
So we asked him, he said uh, about two months ago, uh, I'd like to talk to you about some things. And she said, at last. And he said, after 46 years of marriage, he said, you're not any fun anymore. We have nothing in common. And my car is packed. <laughs> my car is packed. Oh, yes. Wow. So you can imagine that what's my job? She's seeking a woman financial advisor. Oh, and the last parting shot was don't worry about the money. I will take care of it as I always do. And she said in full shock and trauma loaded with cortisol, she said, oh, no, you won't. (laughs) (laughs) So kudos to her. Mm -hmm. And so I got the phone call and so what what would a, a number person would probably go into how much they have, what they have in registered retirement money, blah, blah, blah. In a transition in, in my training from the Institute of Sudden Money and my deep compassion, I just said to her, oh, my goodness, tell me what happened. I use this in all situations and people just start to talk and out it comes. And you can see the diminishing of anxiety. Just tell me all about it. Tell me all about it. And then when she paused, of course, you repeat yourself because your synapses, your brain's just loaded. You cannot think. You're in fight or flight. You feel like you've been put out in the ice flow. Like, holy, this hits you. I said to her, tell me, tell me, may I ask some questions? She, I think she thought they'd be financial. She said, yes, of course, I'm not that well prepared, but I wanted to contact you. I said, are you sleeping? She said, no. I said, are you eating? Does, it go, does food go right through you when you eat? Yes. Are you crying a lot? Yes. Have you lost your keys and your glasses and everything you're looking for? Yes. So... I tried to normalize it when your brain is loaded with trauma. Holy cow. That's the way you are. She thought she was losing her mind. So that was a shocker. Yeah, it is a shocker. I think it shows that. And the, 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 the data would show this, that people have many have no confidence, no one they, that they trust to, to talk about certain things. Very lonely. And we saw a lot of that during COVID. Uh, wow. And, to, and, and you asking those questions, I'm kudos to you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interesting, because upon advice, she interviewed three different ladies. And when she called me back to ask if I would be her planner, uh, I, I, I said, thank you so much. I, I just bonded with her right away. The emotion just connected. I said to her, may I ask why you chose me? And I thought, she would say some different things. I thought she would say, you have great credentials, which I do for this situation, or you were an empathetic listener. She said, you're just like my husband. Therefore, I know you can stand up to him. (laughs) (laughs) I went, what? It was a shocker. (laughs) Yeah. Later, she said, I've never had anyone understand me deeper, but that was her initial. But the second one, you guys are going to love this one. I was speechless. And that's very unusual for me. So tough military guy, Canadian military, Afghanistan, deploying troops, very decisive, very on point, um, smart, decided to leave the military, um, severance package, all that kind of stuff, all the financials. His sister is my client. I get the introduction. I deal with all the technical. I get to know him. Very nice, um, tall, good-looking, organized man. So within about six, eight months, he lives in a town two hours north of me, Edmonton. And I go up there fairly often, uh, back in the old days when we met clients. So um, I was headed up. I had just seen him. And we put out the APB. Does anyone want to see Kathy? And he responded. Uh, and uh, I said, oh, oh, okay, I'll catch him first. So I was making a house call and, and um, uh, he was downtown. So he called back just before I left Calgary. And he said, um, there's some things I have to share for the agenda. And he became indecisive. 
humming and hawing. And I'm, yep, have it on the agenda. Yes, yes, I've got it all here. And then he said, Kathy, you're, you're the same person. You work during the week, you work during the weekend. And I thought he was making a comment on my overzealous work, work ethic. And um, funny how we judge. And then finally he got to the point and he said, Kathy, during the week, I'm a man. And on the weekends, I'm a woman. Wow. Wow. So I said, wow. Um, and this gentleman is tall. He's like six foot. So I said, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. So I'm prepared. So I didn't think much about it. <laughs> I should have maybe. So I get up to a beautiful complex, beautiful old uh, uh, mansion complex overlooking a golf course in the river valley, but it's older and I'm buzzing, buzzing and the door doesn't work and it's all in glass. So I get on my phone and say, door doesn't work. And he said, I'll come down and let you in. The elevator doors opened and out came a 6'2 woman in heels with perfect hair, perfect makeup, walking very feminine, greeting me. Talk about transitions, huh? <laughs> yes. And what, so after I just said, oh my goodness, uh, she, he looked perfect. And I just said, oh my goodness, you look beautiful. Your makeup, your makeup. And she said, I went to the Bay, Hudson's Bay, and hired the Mac rec rep to come home and teach me how to do makeup. Makeup was perfect. She was beautiful. And I just pushed the file aside and said, oh boy. And the purpose of my visit was to do the financial numbers and the planning to do a total sex change journey. Uh, Adam's apple shaved, hair plugs, jaw broken, receded, made into a woman. I think there's a lesson there that, you know, uh, we like to think that life is predictable, our own life, as well as uh, those we know. And uh, it's sometimes it's not. And, uh, and it can lead us in, in, in to areas we never thought we would be able to, or would that we would be there. And we found it during COVID with, in I, we spoke so much about resilience because we all need resilience and things change. Anyway, I can't, you know, it's difficult to, to really frame what you just told me because it is uh, so different. But uh, I think the fact that you did is another kudo for Kathy. Yeah, I have, I have two takeaways from that. Number one, just um, it's so funny how our perceptions and how we think other people are going to be versus what they tell us, what their thought process, like you thought it was your empathy with the first woman you described. And it was the fact that you could stand up to her husband. And here with this man, you didn't know what to expect, you know, um, and yet I really like the coaching element that you bring to the, the you know, financial aspect. So it's not just advising, but it's like asking those questions to find out what do they want? What do they need before, you know, coming up with a plan? And you have to kind of pivot very quickly, I would imagine. It's, it's almost like, um, and I think, Roger, you do the same thing because I feel it. You kind of open up your energy band and you let all the energy kind of co-mingle from them. And when you get that connection, it's, it's kind of like one of those old radios where you're scrolling up and down and then all of a sudden you're on the right band and all of a sudden you're having this human connection. The money is really important because we needed 100000 to go through this. By the way, she looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> She's a showstopper. And man, can she golf, I'm just saying. But um, <laughs> to have that human connection and that sense, from my point of view... Uh, I can speak from my point of view and secondary from my people's point of view is that I feel so valued. I see it feel so fulfilled. I feel like I make a difference uh, and, and that I care and I respect that you let down that shield, that facade that she'd been wearing for 40 years. And she told me very personal, intimate things on the other hand so she spent the weekend with me this past weekend and she's we talked about it 
And she said, I felt that you cared about me. I thought that you definitely, you went right into, oh my goodness, uh, how do you feel about, have you thought about this for a while? Are you sure this is the course of action? The money will be no issues whatsoever. But what about all the other stuff? Making your way in the world is challenging when, when you've got everything going for you. Never mind those hurdles. Wow. Yeah, it's about connection. The story uh, is just pregnant with lessons. Masterpiece is driven by data and powered by content. Maximizing healthy longevity is achievable at all times with the right metrics and content, enabling informed decisions. Powered by Masterpiece can support your community in the critical areas of focus that drive healthy longevity for your residents, staff, and community. Learn more at MyMasterpieceLiving.com. You know, I, I read where we form an opinion of someone, a, a new person, within seconds, uh, and we put them in a pigeonhole. And uh, many of us, it can take a long time to get them out of that pigeonhole. And some of us never do. We make our initial impressions and, and then that's it. And uh, people respond to you so warmly, Kathy. I'm not surprised at all because someone who can unload that sort of piece of information and what he she was doing uh had to feel great confidence uh, in you and to, to see you take it so seriously ask those coaching questions wow i mean i i can't imagine someone wouldn't be drawn and and just you know want to want to work with you i'm curious in these cases there are people who are affluent can we talk a little bit about financial insecurity? Because you've probably seen the other side where people are worried about money and how it can affect their health. Um, mm -hmm. Can you expand on that and maybe give some examples on how you work with people to reduce their stress and kind of man while managing their money? Fabulous question, Danielle. Well, first of all, financial security, you have to ask what that means. And it's very different to a lot of people. I have people initially that come into the office and my first question to someone new is, tell me what it is that you seek. Now that's a wide open question. How they respond to the question tells me what type of approach and what dialogue and communication style I need to use. And uh, there's a difference between men and women, I have to tell you. So in Calgary, we have a lot of engineers. Uh, yikes. <laughs> when I say, what is it that you seek? They slap down their investment statements and say, what kind of return can you get me? And I go, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, where do I start here? Uh, quite often, and this is a generalization, with women, when I say, what is it you seek? They tell me, oh, my goodness, my children, my husband, a great, you know, they're more holistic. Men get to that, but initially they go to the numbers and the system and the black and white that they know. But back to the question of financial security, what does it mean? I ask people, I say, so you say quite often when I'm going for goals and objectives, they say, I would like financial security. And I say, tell me what it looks like. And it's very different. Some people say, um, I have 4 million in investments. And you go, yeah, okay. Does that translate to income? Because you can have 4 million sitting in gold bullion, but it's not going to give you a monthly pension. You're going to have to chop off, you know, gold's heavy, hard to store. Um, so is that what you mean? Do you mean how much money you have like in lump sum? Does it mean that I can generate monthly income to you? of X amount, and, and that's what we actually go to. Uh, what's your lifestyle? What do you want to do? How much is that going to cost? It also goes into life expectancy, where you say, I'm going to take you to 100, because if you're doing all the things you should be doing, <laughs> aside from getting hit by a bus, 
you know, we need to take you to 100. So defining the financial security is the most important thing. And I tell you, I work with intergenerational. So I've got like Roger's mom, Roger, his kids, and I'm starting some grandkids accounts and the communication and the security and the motivation is all different. There is a lot of stress around money. And I've sat in front of people that have a lot of money and they go, it's not enough. Uh, I, I don't have enough because I haven't hit that whatever million marker. It's not about the money, is it? It's about something else. It's about something else. And I've watched it where we hit benchmarks and they go, well, I, I think I need another million. And I go, no, you don't. So now, you know, I have to go back and holistic to really define what the real issue is and where the stress is. I'm not adverse and I encourage um, some counseling, but a great question to ask, because I believe in the constellation family. I don't know if you know this term and the memory that's in DNA or your cells or uh, I'm not medical, obviously, <laughs> so I'm probably mashing this, that I say, tell me your first memory of money. And oh boy, a story comes out. Oh, we didn't have much. We had scarcity. I got a little part-time job. This is how I felt. I had to ask my parent. So now we're uncovering some biases, some predetermined. So this comes intergenerational. So sometimes you have to reflect back on the family. So financial security, I think it's really important to have all, not just numbers. So I can show you a page with a ton of numbers and say, Roger, here's your net worth. Uh, you're secure. There is all the stuff around it. But I'm here to tell you that even people with money don't think they have enough. <laughs> yeah. See, Danielle, I told you she was holistic and, and so many things we have in common. I've heard that so much with people who grew up in very well-to-do families. But if the parents are always talking about, we're going to lose the house, we're going to lose our jobs from this place of lack, that no matter how much they have, they come from that place of it's never enough. It's never enough. And so it's, it's so fascinating because it is that cycle of when I have 1 million, when I have 2 million, when I, and it, unless you break that cycle through coaching or counseling, you're not going to really get too far. You can go way beyond finances too. And uh, you know, it, it, we've, we study people who look at the world half empty, you know, that maybe that's even more appropriate in this conversation. And uh, those who look at it half full live about seven and a half years longer, less stress. Uh, absolutely. Mm. And those who see it half empty, which the, these people that you're describing, I think, uh, are fall into that category that is associated with huge amounts of stress and the, the disease and the chronic uh, problems that uh, health problems that uh, go with that. We want to continue to provide information that is valuable and reliable to our listeners. We welcome your comments and suggestions for topics that are important to you. Please see the description of this episode to contact the Brightside team. You've been listening to Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow.